Hey folks, Travis here from Peplink. We've got a bunch of people on the line waiting here. That's awesome. We've got quite a few people joining. So we're going to wait just a couple of minutes before we get the show started. But in the meantime, we are also broadcasting this live on YouTube. I've put the link into the Zoom chat. So if you want to invite somebody else, they can just watch via YouTube, if that's easier. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of a delay in the audio and, and video on that, but I think that'll be just fine if you're just watching along. So yeah, we'll just wait just a couple more minutes here and we'll get the show started. While we wait just a few more minutes to get started, I see one, at least one question here. We will be recording this. Uh, the link to the recording will be sent out on our user forum. So if you've registered, you should get a notice about that. But worst case, you can go, go check the forum. I think we usually get it up within about 24 hours of the, of the webinar. So you should see that by tomorrow. Again, we'll sit tight for just one more minute as people start to join, and then we'll get started. Okay, folks, it looks like we're leveling off here. So we're going to get the show started. Thanks so much for joining. I'm Travis Durek. I'm a product manager here at Peplink. And today we're here to talk to you about Peplink for RV. And we've brought a special guest today. We've got Eric from Mobile Must Have. He is an RVer himself. And I won't go too far into his introduction, but really at Peplink, we want to make sure that you folks are getting to talk to experts in every, every aspect of, of of applications that that are used for our products. And so, again, we brought Eric here to really speak to the ins and outs of how Peplink works in the, in the RV space. Thank you so much, Travis, for the great introduction. Yeah, so at Peplink, our mission is to make smart, unbreakable connectivity anytime, anywhere. And, you know, we've got some pictures up here. These aren't stock photos. These are actually Peplink deployments, Peplink applications. So people are doing all kinds of crazy stuff with our products. They're using them to enable autonomous driving. Uh, you know, we see commercials about, you know, what the future of 5G might bring, but Peplink's helping bring that today and has been doing that for many years. So we've been enabling things like autonomous driving. We've been helping folks do things like launching rockets in the middle of the desert. Again, these are real applications, but you know, you folks are RVers. And so what does this have to do with your world? And really the beauty of Peplink is we've got this powerful technology that enables these really, really advanced applications. And we've got products that fit into those applications, but we also enable that technology on our entire product line. So you can get those same really game-changing technologies in any of our products. And so you're able to use that same powerful technology to solve problems that really do matter to you that you folks do face day to day when, when you're trying to stay connected out, out and about. And so I'll hand it over to Eric to kind of kick things off and, and tell you a little bit about who he is and, and how he's got into this whole environment. Yeah, thanks so much, Travis. Um, so my name is Eric McCauley. Uh, I'm the founder of a business called Mobile Must Have. Dot com, which is a platinum partner with, uh, with Peplink. Uh, prior to starting Mobile Must Have, um, I own a couple different companies, but probably the, the, the one that I'm most well known for is a company called Axiom Technology Group, and we're a managed services provider. So we essentially provide IT support solutions for businesses. And my background as an MSP 
um, really sort of led me down the path of starting to work with Peplink products. And as I started to hit the road, which we'll talk about in a minute, the Peplink solutions that we were using in business lent themselves very well to uh, working on the road as well. So that sort of business background of IT support solutions we brought into the consumer market when we started Mobile Must Have to talk about how folks can stay connected while they're on the road. Um, my background in terms of a travel perspective up on the top left, that's me and my wife, Kayla. Um, our son, Bradley, is 18 months old. He didn't make the cut for that photo. This was our honeymoon photo. Uh, but we actually hit the road in that RV that you see to the right of us in that photo back in 2015. Um, we were, you know, kind of the New York metro hustle bustle type family. Um, working our butts off. And, and we were fortunate enough because we started Axiom back in 2010 to be able to take the plunge to do a remote lifestyle. So we we're like, you know, I think we can do this. We can actually hop out on the road. And at the time, we actually weren't married yet. Uh, we were uh, about to get engaged. My wife didn't know that yet. And I said, you know, if we can survive in a 400 or, or less square foot space, uh, you know what, this, this could be the one for me. And uh, the rest is history um, with, with, with Kayla and I. To the, to the right there, that's a picture of Andy Murphy uh, and, and his wife. Um, they are our digital experts. Basically, they run our website and, and manage all things digital. And they are also full-time RVers. They've been doing it since, I believe, 2017, if I recall. And they actually live and operate in their RV uh, via uh, with two children and uh, and a dog and a cat, they are packed in, <laughs> and uh, and they they are a one thousand percent reliant on connectivity to to do their jobs as are we. Um, we're actually connected to you right now via a peplink. I'm in my RV right now, and this is being streamed through the technology we're going to talk about in uh, in this presentation. But a high level for folks, I think most people know what an RV is, but we're basically talking about a house on wheels. And um, since, um, since COVID hit, there's been an explosion in the RV industry where people have said, well, you know, if I can't be in large groups and I can't interface with a lot of folks, maybe I can, I can travel. And can I do my job from the road? And we've seen a, a huge increase in, in the RV industry. And that extends beyond just RVs. Um, a lot of our customers are also in, uh, in, in boats and in the marine space as well. So, and, and, and then obviously commercial as well. But for today, we're gonna kind of talk about how the Peplink products can really uh, improve connectivity while traveling on the road. So, um, so this slide, basically, I wanted to distill down what my mission was when I started Mobile Must Have, and I started looking at what I felt was, was wrong with the solutions that were in the RV space. And to be clear, there's, the, the RV industry is catching up to a degree where they're starting to pre-install cellular-based connectivity solutions in their RVs. But from a reliability standpoint and from another perspective in terms of just how well it works, there are some future challenges for folks that really need unstoppable connectivity and need to be able to work from the road. But you know, as an RVer, when I look at what a typical RV customer or person needs from connectivity, I say, okay, first thing, kind of going from left to right, I want it to be user-friendly. You know, yes, I want it to have the technology and the advanced features and functionality for someone like me with a technical background, but I want it to also be something that my wife, who's not technical, knows how to use, can operate, and can understand if I'm not with her. Something that's easy. Um, I'm looking for something that's reliable, that's resilient, meaning it can self-heal and it can, you know, reboot itself essentially or get itself back online if it experiences an issue, and something that really, I don't have to think about. I'm interested when it, when it comes to technology and connectivity, I look at it like, like a utility, like lights, like water. It should just work. It's not something that I want to spend my time thinking about. That's going to impact my productivity at work. And it's, you know, going to mean that I'm spending a bunch of time playing around with tech instead of going out and enjoying the scenery and, and, and doing the fun stuff, which is why we, we hit the road in the first place. I think it's also very important for any solution to be mobile friendly. And I know that sounds kind of obvious, but when you're 
in a RV, you don't have a lot of the things that you're used to having when you're in a traditional stick and brick type environment. Probably the single biggest one that I think of is power. Um, oftentimes you're not in a situation where you have the ability to be hooked up to a standard AC 120 volt power. So for me, a system that's providing mobile internet has to also be able to run on vehicle systems and it has to also be able to put up with the environmental challenges of vehicles, temperature changes, too hot, too cold, all of those things it needs to be able to operate with and not, you know, have it impact its ability to perform. And, and um, another thing that's very important, I think that's probably our number one question that we get from folks is, what's the best cell provider? They, they all ask that. They say, who should I get for cellular? And we kind of laugh at that question because we're like, well, where are you? What time of day is it? Is it raining? How far are you from, you know, XYZ cell tower? How many other customers are on that cell tower? It's, it's just, there are so many variables for connectivity that it's impossible to say this is the right uh, cellular provider or carrier. And the, the way we answer that question is the right provider is more than one provider. It's the ability to have a multi-linked connection where you're connected to the internet and you have redundancy and resilience. So you can handle a single link going down or a problem occurring. And then lastly, there's a lot of really cool technology solutions out there that <laughs> quite frankly, there are products that cost more than my RV uh, for connectivity. So it has to do all of those things and it also has to be something that's affordable for folks. So that's kind of like what I think is required for RV connectivity to really check all of the boxes for somebody to, to feel like they can hit the road and not worry about the internet. It sounds like there's a kind of a big checklist of things there. And it sounds like all of those things are pretty important when, when you add it all up. It's not just one or the other. That's kind of the, the priority there. Oh, it's and yeah, it's there's if you look at any device, whether it's an iPhone, a portable hotspot, a, you know, an integrated solution that came with your RV, they're going to check a bunch of these boxes. The challenge is, can they check them all? And that, mm -hmm. um, I was genuinely surprised when I hit the road that I couldn't just go into a camping world or another store that was an RV specific store or, or my dealership and say, hey, I got to work on the road. What do you have for me that's going to just really be next level? Like something where I, I don't want a consumer grade product. I want something that's going to really work and it's going to give me the connectivity I'm used to from when I was at home. And everyone was like, yeah, that, that doesn't exist. I'm like, I, that cannot be possible. Uh, thankfully, my brother-in-law is a police officer. And when he wasn't looking, I started digging around in his police car and I found some Peplink products. And I said, huh, so police, ambulance, first responders, these folks need to stay connected. It's life or death. Okay, what do these products do that the RV products don't do? And is this something that can be brought into the RV space? And kind of the rest is history. I think at this point, this month, we just ticked off helping our 30,000th RV customer get connected, which is pretty cool since we kind of kicked this all off in 2019. Wow, that, that, that really is incredible. And I, I love the origin there. I mean, just... You know, you know, like I said at the beginning, right, we, we play in a lot of different spaces and we solve problems that are, you know, just really literally life and death sometimes. And it's hard sometimes for people to understand how that can fit into their world, too, and how that can actually be, you know, realistic in their world as well. It's not just that, you know, hey, yeah, I could use that, but I could afford it and I could understand how to use it as well. So uh, that's really cool. Um, I think, you know, to meet all of these needs that you've talked about, there's several features and, and capabilities that we've got. So I'd like to just kind of have you walk through some of the, these features and capabilities and, and just, you know, kind of tell, tell the folks how this fits into the day-to-day -day RV life and, and connectivity in that world. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's so many more than five, but, you know, we've only got a limited amount of time. So I wanted to say, okay, what are kind of my top five really cool things that that step peplink products, you know, up and away from, from stuff that's uh, available kind of more mainstream in the RV industry. 
Um, the first one is the multiple internet connections. Um, this is a, a live actual, well, not live, but I took it this morning, shot of the pep wave I'm talking to you on right now. Um, and if you look there, it says priority one highest, and you've got five connections to the internet that are all working simultaneously together to help me stay connected on the internet. In this particular example, that HD1 dome, which we'll get into, this is a little bit more of an advanced uh, setup uh, than just a single Peplink product. I've got some cool geek slides at the end for folks if they want to, you know, <laughs> really geek out and go completely crazy with a setup like this. But with the, so that dome unit is using T-Mobile and then we've got AT&T and Verizon. So I've got all three major cellular providers operating at the same time. And because I'm currently parked outside of our home, I'm also connected to my house internet as well as a secondary backup using uh, a technology we'll talk about in a minute called Wi-Fi as WAN, or the ability to use like a public Wi-Fi for your internet source. So the Peplink product lets me not just pick from one internet or go between them, but use them at the same time. And that's really a game changer in terms of how the product works for my ability to make sure I stay connected at all times. Excellent. So I think it can be a little bit hard for people to wrap their head around multiple internet connections, right? I mean, they, you know, with multiple internet connections can come multiple bills, but um, I think absolutely as people dive into it, I think their expectations are really high and, you know, expectations of any single internet connection are really high, right? It's just, it's supposed to just work. Right. And like you said, there's so many variables there. And I think that is really what, plays out as you try to do this remotely like yeah it works it worked this morning i had a zoom meeting and it was great and then gosh this afternoon i, I nobody hears me it's breaking up all the time and it's just absolutely yeah and the vast majority of our customers i'd say 99 percent, do not have a, a setup that is this complicated um mm -hmm. i'd say about 75 of our customers utilize a multi-modem solution meaning they do have two modems that are connected at the same time, a cellular one and a cellular two. And we'll kind of get into the, the transit series and the BR series products, well, really the transit series products that have those dual modem capabilities as a, at a price point that, that is digestible for the RV market. Um, and uh, But a lot of our customers operate on single modem devices. But what's so nice about PepWave is, okay, I only have one modem, but I have multiple SIM slots. So I can switch between AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile at the press of a button, wait you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds for the modem to reboot, and boom, I'm on another carrier. I'm not sitting there like, you know, hotspot swapping, and I've got multiple Wi-Fi networks, and I'm, oh, let me try this hotspot and this. It's all a single pane of glass, single management solution to hop between those things. And a lot of our customers, like you said, because of that cellular connectivity bill, they'll operate their primary internet with a high high gigabyte data plan that they've obtained. And we can kind of get into that stuff in a bit. And then their secondary plan, maybe it's a Verizon 22 gigabyte plan. They'll use that as a backup. So it's like, you know what? I travel primarily with my at and for example, and then I swap over and I use the Verizon only when I have to, or when it's simply a better you know, coverage area in that area. Not everyone has to you know, use them at the same time. It's just, a, it's a trade-off of can you be down for those 30 seconds when you're swapping modems? And a lot of our, our customers who are working from the road are saying, I really can't. Like, I, I have to be on this Zoom call. I can't drop off when I'm presenting to, you know, 300 people. Um, and and that's, uh, it's, it's really, it's, but the, the key is there is that you have the choices and the flexibility to add or subtract as many connections as, as you need or want. Yeah. And I think that that 30 seconds that you explained, I mean, that sounds so trivial when we just talk about it here, but when you're on a call and you're waiting for something or something breaks there, that 30 to 60 to 90 seconds, I mean, that can be just an eternity in, in the moment like that. And it can, you know, not only is it frustrating, it just doesn't present a very good image when you're trying to, you know, be professional and, and live this kind of mobile lifestyle. Um, but, you know, there's other products out there that have multiple connections, not a lot of them, but there are other products on the market that do have the ability to have multiple connections. But the, the thing that Peplink does is we make, we, we take a very different approach to that multi-connection strategy. There, there's, there's other cellular routers that have one or multiple modems. There's other cellular routers that have a Wi-Fi as WAN capability, but 
there's a lot of details and technology in the background that gets kind of glossed over. Every multi-modem or a multi-connection product is very much not the same. And, and so that leads me into what is our second uh, feature or capability here that really, I think, makes Peplink stand out from all those other solutions. And that's our Speed Fusion technology and Speed Fusion Cloud. So if you could just kind of help explain what that is and how, how you've been using that or how your customers have been using that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I guess to put it kind of simply, so if you had five internet connections, imagine you have like five cell phones sitting on a table in front of you and you want to make a phone call. The, the fact that you have five cell phones in front of you does not mean you're going to have a more reliable phone conversation. You have to pick up one phone and make the call. And the way the internet and, and networking operates um, in, in its kind of native or standard configuration is, is a lot like a phone call. There is one connection that you can use to, to talk back and forth with another computer somewhere else on, on the internet. Um, what, what Speed Fusion does, or you know, it's also known as like SD-WAN or bonding, um, is that it, it, it essentially takes a, a VPN technology on the PEP wave and it connects to a data center. In, in the case of Speed Fusion Cloud, it's connecting to PepWave's data center, and it's creating a tunnel that allows all five of those connections to flow through that tunnel at the same time. And on both sides of that tunnel, there is either hardware or software, typically a, a PepWave like you see in this picture, that is essentially kind of organizing all of the data and information to go across all five of those connections at the same time. And with Speed Fusion Cloud, you can do a lot of really cool things like, hey, you know what? I want to actually send a little bit. I want to send copies of data across two different connections. So if one of the connections fails, there's a second backup copy of that information or data that's going over the second connection. The, the term typically used for that is called WAN smoothing. And when you enable WAN smoothing, which is a simple checkbox in Speed Fusion, you're, you're now not only using multiple connections, but you're creating redundancy in that connection so that you can uh, connect to, um, to that carrier in multiple, uh, with multiple connections. In terms of Speed Fusion um, Cloud, what's so cool about it, I mean, SD-WAN's been around for, for a while, but it used to just be like, no problem, just pick up your $30,000 router and it'll, it'll support that function. Um, You're being literal you know, there, right? That's not a that's not a made up price point either. I no, it's a very very literal. I'm like, you know. Oh, and by the way, you need two of them because you got to <laughs> buy one for the other side. So now you're they're like sixty grand. I'm like, yeah, and then you have to pay the monthly bill for the internet pipe. Um, so it it and you need multiple pipes. So it 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 used to be we we did a lot of SD WAN for hedge funds, private equity firms, financial services, banks, stuff like that, where they really could could afford that. Um, they also needed to pay me. So you needed an IT guy typically with an extensive you know, networking background to set the thing up. It's oftentimes like command line. And it was just, you know, you, you kind of needed a pretty heavy tech stack to, to get the stuff working. Um, what, what Speed Fusion Cloud does, and it's quite amazing. Um, and I know I'm a Peplink partner, but I use this and it's pretty cool. Is it lets you set up SD-WAN without needing to subscribe to anything for a data center. And you can do, you can get from, I'm online to enabling Speed Fusion in less than five minutes. And you need absolutely no technical background. If you look in the top left, those are literally the four steps from the actual management console of how you set up Speed Fusion Cloud. Step one, you choose your cloud location, which most people just set to auto. So it'll automatically connect to the data center closest to you. And typically step two, which is the only thing you need to do is the third button there that says link Wi-Fi to cloud. You press that and it will just duplicate your wireless network. And at, you, know, you can rename it to say Speed Fusion or whatever and creates a new wireless network on your PEP wave that instantly now is going to use the Speed Fusion technology. And what's great about that is you can then connect only the devices that you want to use Speed Fusion to that connection so that you don't have to route all of your traffic through Speed Fusion. Um, some people ask me, they're like, well, why don't I just route all my traffic through Speed Fusion? And you can, um, I typically do, but 
you know, there is a fee associated with how much traffic you're running through that pipe. And also when you're RVing, if, if you do like a Google search for local Chinese restaurant, it's going to show you the restaurants that are at the data center location in Chicago. <laughs> so, so a lot of the times you don't want to necessarily use Speed Fusion for everything, but for a Zoom call or for something where you need that unbreakable connectivity, it's something where you can just simply change the Wi-Fi network you're connected to and boom, you're connected and you're using multiple connections. And that's just something I have not seen uh, from, from anyone except for Peplink. I think it's a really revolutionary product that, that brought something complicated down to you know, folks that, that don't have to have you know, IT degrees. I love the, the, the five cell phone analogy because you know, we, we've tried to try and boil this down to, to make it easy to understand for folks what, what we're really enabling or delivering with, with Speed Fusion here. And I, I think that really does a great job of explaining that. Like you said, you know, if, if you're in your car and I'm on a Verizon phone and I've got an AT&T and a T-Mobile phone sitting next to me, yeah, my call is only on Verizon. I've got these two other phones next to me, but, you know, I go into this little dip or this little valley and maybe Verizon is not covering that as well as T-Mobile is, you know, every, every network's going to have little differences here and there, right? I'm not trying to pick on any one network, but that's the reality, right? If you travel hundreds or thousands of miles, nobody's the best in any one spot, like you said. Um, but, you know, with Speed Fusion, you can literally hand that call off from AT&T to Verizon. And so it works exactly the same on, like you said, with, with these internet applications. If I open up a Zoom call and I have another vendor's router that has two different cellular connections in it, their router is only going to be able to send that Zoom call out one connection or the other. Now, if your kid's watching YouTube, maybe the YouTube feed goes out the other connection, but your, connect, your Zoom call is still gonna live and die on that one single connection. And so speed fusion is what makes that completely dynamic and able to shift midstream, mid packet so that you can completely hand that call off without that 30, 90 second drop. You know, if you're using a, a corporate office VPN on, on your laptop, it's the same thing. That VPN can only live on one connection or the other connection with, with a non SD-WAN device. And I think the term SD-WAN gets um, abused a little bit. There's the SD-WAN that you talked about, right? There's the enterprise grade SD-WAN. And, and that's been around for a long time. And that can do some of the things that we've just been talking about, right? Shifting things live from one to another. But in the cellular space, vendors throw that term out a lot in a very misleading way to make you think that their multi-radio solution is going to deliver that. And a lot of people just end up disappointed when they actually go through that failover experience because with other multicellular routers, they don't have that real packet level SD-WAN technology. And so when that, when, that, when that single line fails, so do your calls. And it's just kind of unexpected for people when they thought they had redundancy, they thought they had access to these multiple networks. And so it, it might be splitting hairs on a technical perspective, but you know, the day-to-day -day experience, it's a major difference. Yeah, I mean, we, we see a lot of folks uh, confuse also load balancing with with bonding. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm bonded. I'm like, well, no, you, you have two connections enabled, but what's what's really happening is some of your traffic's going out this connection and some of your traffic's going out this connection. And the PepWave supports that natively if you don't enable speed fusion and you have a multimodem device. But uh, quite a few competitors and some stuff in the RV space sort of... I wouldn't say they market it directly, but they sort of in, they sort of say like, oh, this is a bonding device. And I'm like, well, it's really not. Your connection's using one or the other. Um, and yes, you do have the ability to have more bandwidth across two, but it's it's not it's not technically, you know, utilizing any redundancy. And and kind of I know we're diving a little bit for the weeds, but I'm just so excited about some of the questions I'm seeing in chat and what people are doing. Um, one thing to just note is when you enable something like WAN smoothing, you are typically utilizing more data. So if your you know, Zoom call was going to use, you know, I don't know, 200 megabytes for a call, it would actually, if you had WAN smoothing enabled at its sort of standard mode, it would use about double that. So it would use 400 meg because it's duplicating so many packets. But you can also, which I love in the latest version of Speed Fusion Cloud, is you can actually disable WAN smoothing. Um, I'm on this call right now, and I, I, don't, I don't typically actually enable WAN smoothing unless I'm in a really tough, tricky area. It's worked out really well where I just have speed fusion and enabled without that. Um, but just the customization that you can do to, to kind of balance how much data you're using with 
uh, how reliable your connection is, is, is just, it's just awesome. And, and the fact that you, you don't need a second device. So you're, you're effectively connecting to the Speed Fusion cloud, which is, it's acting like a second device up in the cloud, but you don't have to purchase something and then go put it somewhere where there's an internet connection. So if we've got all these multiple connections, it, it just sounds complicated, right? There's just so many things in play and you know, just how, how do I make sense of all this, right? As a, as a non-technical user. Yeah, I mean, so I think one of our most common things we see when we bump into a customer who says, I, I don't know, I, I sort of work some, I've got all these hotspots, I use my phone, I've got three carriers, which it's kind of the funniest thing because they're already paying typically for more than one cellular provider, but they went you know, into a store and they picked up a hotspot. And a lot of those hotspots, you know, or all of those hotspots really were not designed to be on 24 seven. That's not what they do. They're designed to be taken out of a backpack, used for three, four hours, have five or six devices connect to them and then turn them off. And that's sort of how they are supposed to operate. But um, regardless of that, one of the challenges when you start to have all of these different hotspots is they're all broadcasting their own Wi-Fi networks. So it's like you turn on the Verizon hotspot, okay, let me go into my smart TV, let me go into my laptop, let me go into my Amazon Echo, let me go into all my stuff and go connect it to the new Wi-Fi. Oh, I move locations, Verizon doesn't work, I'm going to hop over to my AT&T. You're like hopping back into that TV. And I don't know about you, but if I have to type a Wi-Fi password with my TV remote, I'm like, I want to, I'm, I'm not very happy after I do it two or three times. I'm like, this is crazy. Um, what the Peplink device does is it says, hey, regardless of what internet connection you're using, your internal network, your private Wi-Fi network is going to always stay the same. So, you know, in my case, my network, I call it enterprise because we, we called our, our, our RV enterprise. So my local Wi-Fi that broadcasts inside my RV says enterprise. And regardless of where I'm switching from an internet connection perspective, my local Wi-Fi and all my devices don't have to be reconfigured. Um, that also applies to my desktop, which I'm talking to you on right now, which has a ethernet hardwire to the PEP wave. So I've chosen to run an ethernet cable. So I'm not even using Wi-Fi for my desktop to just make it a little bit more reliable because Wi-Fi is typically very reliable, but you know, there can be a, a lot of interference in certain RV parks. And um, also I just, I'd rather be hardwired so that the Wi-Fi is available for other devices um, in, in my network. So you can have a private Wi-Fi, you can then wire in hardwired devices. Um, you know, we, we hardwired in our TVs and other stuff, and we've also hardwired in our, our RV management system that controls climate and all that stuff, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but then you have the ability to also group your networks. So what that means, I, we see this a lot for customers is they want uh, a network for their kids. And they're like, hey, can we just have a kid's network? They want a network for work. Like, hey, can you create a network on the PepWave device that's, um, that's something where I can then set like bandwidth limits and this will have a priority of usage over the connection? Absolutely, you can. Um, we'll get into it a little bit more in a bit, but you can also do things like content filtering. And parents, for parents, that's huge. It's like, hey, I need, I want to block YouTube. Okay, we can do that. Um, all, you know, inside of the Peplink uh, ecosystem, you're able to do that. And then lastly, you can set up a guest Wi-Fi for when you have folks coming in, you're not handing out the Wi-Fi password to your private network where people would be able to see your devices on the network. You can give them an isolated guest network. And you can also set bandwidth limits for that network to say that one, you know, maybe doesn't have access to as much uh, of your bandwidth or availability through, through the management interface. So that mm -hmm. local kind of unified, I just set up my devices once. I hate to sound like, you know, Ron Popeil from, you know, the old infomercial <laughs> days, but you set it and you forget it. You know, that's kind of how it works. Yeah, and that's I mean that's really important because it's something we've seen in a lot of different you know customer profiles where you know they've already came to the point where they understand okay yes I do need more than one connection but you know again this that ease of use thing and you know you can like you said you can just set it all up and you can forget it you can say okay yeah my you know the these Wi-Fi networks are you know free number one generally and so you know let's use that bandwidth first and. You know, for these applications, I really prioritize those. Those are, you know, mission critical for me. 
that that all happens no matter which connections you're on, no matter which RV park you're at, it, right? It just stays there and it, it automatically manages what's available, what's priority one, what's priority two. And so you don't have to go back in there and fine tune things every time you get to this place or that place. It's all just kind of baked into the cake. Yeah, I mean, I, we kind of deleted the slide just because it was getting a little technical, but um, I, it does look like we've got quite a few Peplink users in, in chat and they're asking questions about, you know, hey, can I prioritize a, a less expensive connection? And the, the answer is absolutely. On the dashboard, you can say priority one, two, three, and set your priorities based on what you want to have uh, operate first. You can then set bandwidth caps and limits per SIM. Hey, if this SIM hits this many gigs, turn it off and then it will automatically fail over to the second rule. And then if you want to get even more kind of fun, you can hop into the advanced tab and go into the outbound policy section. And then you can really get deep into doing some cool stuff like, hey, I want to do a weighted balance where 60% of my traffic goes over this link and only 40 goes into this link. And you can start to really dial in how your links are used based on um, you know, whatever factors you're trying to, to account for, data plans, usage, uh, speed on each line, et cetera. I mean, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I think you guys have like seven or eight algorithms for how to route outbound traffic. Um, you can do it by lowest latency, by what, you know, connection responds the fastest. Uh, you can do it by, like I said, weighted balance. You could do enforced, you know, saying, hey, I always want to use this connection for, I don't online banking because I want to, you can do whatever you really want with outbound policies and, and dial it into a, to just such a perfect degree of, you know, I, I've yet to find something I can't do <laughs> with this device. I'm probably going to, probably going to regret saying that when the Q and a session comes up, but uh, at least for, for my use, it's, it's just been incredibly flexible. I don't have to say we can't do that very often. I can't think of a, an example off offhand where we just can't do that, right? It's, it's, you know, it's, we've got an amazing engineering team that enables all of these capabilities. So it's, it's fun to be able to jump into these different challenges. Um, so Wi-Fi is WAN isn't unique to Peplink, but if you could just explain, number one, what that is, and then number two, you know, how we can take that a step further with, with our solution. Yeah, so I mean, Wi-Fi as WAN essentially means, hey, connect to an external public Wi-Fi source. Typically, it could also be a private Wi-Fi source, like at your home or somewhere else. But for the vast majority of, of RV customers or, or boating customers, it's going to be a marina Wi-Fi system or a campground Wi-Fi system. And historically, they have not been particularly very good. Uh, I'll just be perfectly honest. Uh, it, it's you know been one of those things where you connect and you're just like, oh, this is this is not uh, not really that much fun. Now with with broadband becoming more available in rural areas and becoming more uh, affordable, we're starting to see campgrounds that you know are getting you know gigabit Ethernet connections and porting it into their Wi-Fi systems. So it's starting to. And we were at a campground. Uh, about six months ago in the Smoky Mountains, and they had gigabit Ethernet at every single pedestal. Um, and then they also had it through the Wi-Fi. It was the fastest Wi-Fi I've ever seen um, in a campground. It was really kind of mind-blowing that they'd figured out how to get it to work so well. Um, it's not necessarily what we would consider like a primary thing you want to do is use Wi-Fi um, because it has limited range and, and it, uh, it typically in a campground is pretty saturated, um, but it's available and it's something that you could do and you can add it as an additional layer inside of uh, the Speed Fusion cloud tunnel. But great, so Wi-Fi WAN, you can use public Wi-Fi. And again, you've got that single local ethernet. So if you decide to connect to campground Wi-Fi, you're not taking all of your devices in your RV and connecting them to the campground Wi-Fi. Another kind of benefit, not that I want to encourage folks to break the rules, but your PEP wave is considered one device. So if you're at a campground and they charge $49 for use of premium internet Wi-Fi for up to three devices, when your PEP wave connects to that Wi-Fi as one device, all of your other devices in your RV are going to operate as that same one device because they're behind the PEP wave. So you kind of get outside of that limit of, oh, I'm only allowed to have you know one or two devices. Now everything is connected as long as your PEP wave is connected. A big question that we get around Wi-Fi WAN is, is it secure? And that's a great question. I mean, we can have local security and we can do all sorts of stuff, but at the end of the day, if 
if you're just using a standard Wi-Fi WAN product, you're going over that campground's Wi-Fi and you're subject to whatever is going on in their connection. Your, your traffic's essentially not encrypted at that point. Even though the Wi-Fi is encrypted, at, at the you know, router level, there could be something going on that could be looking at your information. Is it likely? No, but can it happen? Yes. And when you add in that Speed Fusion or Speed Fusion Cloud component, you're putting that VPN tunnel over that Wi-Fi connection through that campground Wi-Fi. So that is securing it. Um, so it is, it is a way to secure the ability to use a public Wi-Fi system without having to go buy a third-party VPN software like NordVPN or, or, or one of those, uh, which are also options you can do. Um, the challenge is just they typically run on one device. So it's, you know, when you're using Speed Fusion Cloud, anything that's connected is going to run through that secure connection. Nice. Yeah, I, I love that because that's, you know, that, that extra layer of security is something that I think is easy to overlook. But like you said, it, it you don't know who may be on the other side of that, right? It may be an encrypted network over the air, but that doesn't mean it's encrypted over the wire when it, you know, when it gets into that network. And so, yeah, that's just one more line of defense you've got to kind of keep and tying it's not, it's, to... Exactly. And it's not always malicious. I mean, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, you're, your internet service provider is selling information about your your ability to use the internet and that's perfectly legal and they're making money on that and if that's something you want to avoid then you know securing your wi-fi and having it run through speed fusion cloud is is definitely a a great way to do that yep absolutely so if we've got all these connections and all these applications and all these user groups how do we kind of like put this all together what what do you what tools do we have there to like make sense of all this? Yeah, I was like, how much stuff can I fit on one slide? Uh, <laughs> so apologies for the uh, the dense packed slide here. Um, but um, I'd say the first thing that we we get um, that that really just stands out from any real routing product is the ability to have just extensive reporting and uh, usage reporting. I mean, you can dive into reporting on what protocols are using the internet, but you know, just keeping it high level, the ability to look at bandwidth reporting, downloading and uploading real time by connection or by day or by month and, and see that metered usage and understand your usage characteristics and understand what's going on is huge for the mobile community. Um, the ability to, I mean, I can't tell you how many people hit the road, they're brand new to RVing and you know, they go through 150 gigs in, in three days. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean I'm throttled? And I'm like, well, I'm looking at the usage reports and uh, yeah, it looks like, were you guys watching Netflix? And they're like, yeah, my kid, you know, I just put the TV on so that, and I'm like, yeah, so that was at 4k. And uh, yeah, that was about 20 gigs per movie. <laughs> so, so how many did you watch? And they're like, mm, five. And I'm like, well, there you go. Um, so, so the ability to see the reporting um, and to see it live in real time. We see a lot of customers. Hey, my internet's slow. I'm like, cool. Click on the status tab. Click on clients. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, sort by download speed or upload speed. And they're like, yeah, something here says 10 megabits. And I'm like, cool. What's the name next to it? They're like MacBook. And I'm like, uh-huh. I'm like, are you using that MacBook? They're like, no. And I'm like, cool. It's downloading updates. And they're like, oh, it is? I'm like, yeah, you should probably turn that off because you're burning your cellular data plan because your MacBook's downloading uh, you know, Mojave or whatever the latest operating system is that's four, four gigabytes or six gigabytes. Um, so it's, you know, is the cellular network perfect? Is it always fast? Aren't there, you know, external considerations and whatnot? Absolutely. But the reporting and the visibility is a huge component to understanding why the connection is slow and figuring out what you can do about it. Um, then you've got your, your ability to set limits. So you can say, you know what, I want to set up groups and I want to set up bandwidth limits by device or by groups. Um, you can also you know, you can use a sliding scale for bandwidth. Like I want 60% of my bandwidth to be for devices in this group, like my work computers, and I'll reserve the rest for other devices or for my guest network. Um, you can also, like for me, I, I set up application priority. Um, I did a little screenshot there of, you know, Zoom, voice over IP, 
and my application Zoom, if I hit save on that screen, I can then tell it, tell it, do I want it to be low priority, high priority, medium priority? So we typically set our streaming services as high priority, and then we set, I'm sorry, our, our VOIP services as high priority, and then our streaming services as normal or low priority, because we don't want the stream to be a priority over the call. It's not saying that it's going to stop Netflix, but it will all oftentimes reduce the amount of bandwidth that Netflix has available in favor of Zoom. And that's a, that's a pretty cool feature. And then lastly here, we've got the content filter um, screenshot here and apologize for the, the P word there, but I don't, <laughs> that is what it is. So you have the ability to block adult content and, and stuff like that, that uh, you may not want folks to have access to on your network. Yeah. And you can, you can, customize that per group like you talked about too so you can have a kids group that blocks all that and not that you necessarily want to open it up for yourself but you've got the abil ability to distinguish between those two groups and what they may or may not be able to see and so it, it's just one more layer of customization that you can kind of put into play and again not have to manage day to day absolutely um, and if you if you want to go with a more robust content filtering solution um, that, you know, uses different DNS servers, you can do that as well. So it's like it, it mm -hmm. you know, the built-in product is, is, I think, exceptional based on the fact that it's, that it's, it's free, you know, it's included in your, your care subscriptions. So, you know, the fact that you can use that um, is great, but if you want to step it up and use something a bit more advanced, you have that ability as well. You know, it's like any other um, router, it's fully configurable to, to, to use whatever content service you want to, you want to use. So we've talked about a lot of different features, a lot of different capabilities. And so I, I want to just go back and kind of like put it all back together now, right? I, I think this, this piece that you put together really connects all the dots for people from where we started here. Yeah, so this is a graphic courtesy of uh, Chris and Cherie from the Mobile Internet Resource Center, uh, which is a, a fully member funded uh, unbiased um, news and information site that's located at rvmobileinternet.com. Uh, we partner with them for quite a quite a bunch of stuff, uh, really around um, product information. We send them, you know, uh, uh, hardware to test, and they do independent analysis on those products. They're not paid by us or or anything like that, or paid by anyone for that matter, other than their members. So it's a member funded community, and one of the the things that they do not to you know give them a shameless plug but it's just so awesome when i'm talking to customers is they put together sample gear guides or gear setups and this is a an example of one of those that utilizes uh, a peplink mobile router and kind of gives you a visual interpretation of what's going on with that setup so kind of taking it from uh, let's go the opposite direction we'll go top right around uh to the left we've got that multi-wan configuration. So you, you see your two cell towers there and your Wi-Fi connection, and those are all connecting to a centralized central antenna or roof antenna. And we'll get into some of the, the Peplink products that, that um, you guys feature. I think specific for the RV industry, we'd be looking at the Mobility 42G, which is a seven and one antenna that has four cellular elements, two Wi-Fi elements, elements like antennas basically, and then one GPS element all in that single, you know, nice compact, I think it's about eight and a half inch wide dome. Um, and that allows you to connect to multiple cell carriers um, using like a category six or category 12 modem, we'll get into that, and Wi-Fi all from that, uh, that roof antenna. And you know, a lot of people are like, oh, the campground Wi-Fi is terrible. I'm like, where are you? They're like, I'm in my RV. I'm like, so the Wi-Fi is not good inside of the aluminum box that you live in. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm not surprised. Like you, what, what happens if you go outside? Oh, it's great outside. So by, by removing the, the devices from basically by putting the antenna up on the roof, you're greatly improving your cell signal um, by using an external antenna. And uh, you also can pick up Wi-Fi WAN much easier. So kind of looking down going into the unified network. So now you've picking up those multiple WANs, that device in the middle there is your PEP wave, and that's now rebroadcasting to your internal devices. Um, it is a mobile friendly solution. All PEPLink devices that we talk about today will run on DC power, typically between like 10 and 30 volts. So if you've got a 24 volt system, you're, you're covered. Um, some of the more advanced modems like the transits will run on 48 volts. Uh, so if, if you're running like a solar system, or a 48 volt battery bank and you want to power it at that voltage, you can. 
Um, so it's it's a highly mobile friendly device, and it and it's very and it, it operates at a variety of different voltages. So it's it's like if it's you know 11 volts or 12 volts or 13.8 volts, you're not in a situation where that modem is rebooting or having problems. Um, which we we just love the power system that you put in that device. Uh, some of our previous solutions would would just quite frankly reboot whenever the batteries got a little low, and people would get really frustrated with us and we're, we're glad we're, we're away from that and on to Peplink. Um, and then, yeah, everything we talked about before. So it's resilient and reliable. I mean, we're talking about an enterprise grade product. I mean, if you run, you know, let's, the, I mean, Travis, you know, if you run a SDX or, or a really, you know, you know, some of our enterprise grade Peplink products, or you run a transit, you log into them, same software <laughs> running on both. So you're getting yep. all of that development from you know a thirty plus thousand dollar router that's designed to basically be in a data center for, for a carrier, and the the amount of of software development and reliability that went into that piece of software is running on the device that you can buy for your RV, and that's why I think it worked so well. Um, and then yeah, Speed Fusion and user friendly. It's uh, stuff we've covered there. Yeah, that that's something that I'm personally really proud of. Just the fact that you can have a solution from Peplink that costs thirty thousand dollars that runs a, a literally runs an entire you know hospital campus, and you can get that same technology in a three hundred dollar product from Peplink. I mean, it, it's just you just don't see that very often, and and so I, I just I'm, I'm really proud that we're able to bring that capability down to folks, you know, to make it useful for them because again. Everybody needs connectivity now. It's not just the uh, the hedge funds and uh, the Fortune 500s of the company of, of the of the world that need that connectivity now. It's it's really an everybody type of type of need at this point. So um, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. If we'll I'll geek out for a second, but I don't know if you remember the the a, the Wi-Fi vulnerability that I think was like back in 2017. It was called Crack, mm-hmm. and basically they found a a, a pretty latent vulnerability in Wi-Fi networks where you could you could crack into a Wi-Fi network. Peplink patched that before Cisco did. And that was tough because I'm a Cisco partner as well. <laughs> and my customers were like, it was great to get on the phone with, with Meraki and Cisco and be like, oh, uh, well, Peplink patched this already. Why haven't you guys patched it already? And because of that unified operating system, that meant that it was able to be patched across the entire you know platform of systems within, I want to say it was like within six or seven days from that a vulnerability being identified. It was really cool, and you know that unified software kind of idea. It's like out of the Apple playbook. You know, it's, if you look at you know your iPhone and your iPad, they're all running the same software. And I think it was super smart for Peplink to do that because it's it's just creating a tremendous amount of of reliability in the products. Yeah, you know, again, I get to kind of stand on the shoulders of giants. You know, th- those are decisions that our engineering team made years and years ago to try and, you know, really make their lives simpler, but also, again, like you said, enable that common experience across the products. And so it, it's something that we're, you know, very focused on maintaining that that common experience, right? You know, this product may have more radios or more this or faster that, but um, yeah, that that kind of standardized development process where, you know, if it's if it's capable of being run on the different hardware platforms, you're you're going to be able to you're going to be able to do that. And you know, again, like the security patches and things like that, it just benefits. You know, there's benefits beyond just uh, what features or functionalities you're you're able to get. Um, Absolutely. So the, next, the next one, you and I kind of geeked out on yesterday, but I think this is really interesting because you know it's not just about connecting to the internet. It's uh, you know for folks that have a I'd say a more sophisticated setup or just a, a larger setup. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do besides just, you know, getting on your zoom call when you're out, out in a national park. Yeah. So this is, this is a, a snapshot of my, my uh, previous RV I actually sold this RV and I, I continue to monitor it for the customer who, who uh, purchased it. Cause they're like, can you just keep an eye on the RV? I'm like, sure. So because they have a Peplink solution in the, in their RV, we were able to uplink the, uh, the management systems. This one's run by a company called Victron. That's pretty, pretty well known in the Marine space. And it's starting to become more and more well known in the RV space. Um, so we have complete visibility over the power systems of this particular RV. So solar, you know, what AC loads, how, what's going on with shore power, our battery, weather, uh, input current, everything going on there. 
um, for, I didn't have time to take a snapshot, but for our RV we're in right now, which is uh, made by a company called Integra, um, they have a system called a Firefly system, which is a touchscreen that manages kind of everything in the RV from the slides to the hot water, to the window shades, to uh, climate control, to lights, everything. And that is an IP enabled device. So we spent a few um, minutes on the phone with Firefly, got the, the configuration for their network, um, removed the uh, router that they pre-installed with the coach that was, was a consumer grade device, put our pep link in, and now we can control and see everything in the RV from our phones or tablets, either when we're in the RV or when we're anywhere out uh, and about to keep an eye on our, on our RV. And that's not just, you know, for the high-end class A's anymore. We're seeing uh, you know, Lippert is a is a pretty well known manufacturer, uh, and and we work with them on some some cool stuff and ideas. And they uh, their One Connect product um, we've integrated multiple times, and a lot of our customers have where that you know even down to like you know entry level RVs have the ability now to to have these central management consoles, and they can be network controlled or at least accessed via a pep link with with typically just with a single Ethernet cable. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, so we're, we're running into, we got about five minutes left on the scheduled time here. We've got a lot of products to show you folks, and I'm going to go through those really quickly because I want to respect your guys' time. And uh, I think, Eric, if, if you're okay, we'll, we'll take just the last four minutes to click through those quick. And then if you can stay on, we can take a few questions for folks and just give folks a few opportunities to get, get some other details sorted out that they're interested in. Absolutely. Sorry, I, I, I talk so much. <laughs> no, this is mean, mine. Yeah, same here. I mean, I, I can talk about this stuff all day. And I, I hope the folks on the line are, are finding finding value in this as well. But um, but yeah, so like we talked about, you know, we've got a really wide range of products to serve all kinds of different needs. But you know, looking into the RV world, there's a handful of models that I think really fit well, depending on who you are, how important connectivity is for you and, and you know where you're going, what you're trying to do. And so there's some really affordable entry level options and then there's some more advanced performance options. And then there's a whole line of accessories like antennas because you know these connections are only as good as the weakest link in that, in that path. And so um, we'll step through these quick here. You know, the Transit Mini, this is a, this is a 399 device, right? Very affordable, very small, but still super rugged. It's got some of these capabilities that we talked about. It's only got one cellular connection in it, um, but it's got two SIM cards. So if you show up at this national park in this state and at and best here, cool. You can use at and If you show up at a different park in a different state and Verizon's the best there, cool. You can switch to that SIM card. You can only use one at a time, but again, you can have those in there and you can kind of automate which one you prefer to use. Um, but you can also do the Wi-Fi WAN. You can also plug it into an Ethernet connection if that park has that type of connectivity. So you can still get some of those speed fusion cloud benefits, bridging the gap between your cellular connection and either that Wi-Fi WAN or your, your ethernet connection. If, if you happen to have that, um, we've got the BR one Mark two. This is very similar in, in terms of the connections it supports the, the big difference here is it's just got way better Wi-Fi. It's got a dual band MIMO configuration versus the single band, single antenna configuration on the previous one. So it's, going to perform better on the Wi-Fi as WAN, and it's going to perform better for all of your devices that are connecting to it over Wi-Fi. Uh, the Transit Pro-E, this is, this is a new model in our Transit series. This is a dual cellular device. And so it's got, again, the, the ability to connect to two networks at the same time. So you can do those more advanced things like WAN smoothing, bonding over multiple cellular connections at the same time. So just little more capability on the cellular side. It's got that that's great. The, for folks, Go that's ahead. the device that I had all the screenshots on. That's the device we run in our coach. Oh, cool. Yeah, and this one, you know, it's got, again, that same great Wi-Fi experience and just some other, like you talked about earlier, that wider uh, voltage input. So it accommodates different, different power scenarios. Uh, it's also got PoE output. So if you got an IP phone, cool. That's one less thing that you have to find a plug-in for or an IP camera or something like that, or just a Wi-Fi access point. Yeah, what we've been doing, just I know we're gonna go quick, but we we uh, use the roof antenna and the integrated radio for Wi-Fi WAN only. 
and then we disable it for local Wi-Fi, and then we use that PoE port to power an AP uh, AX light for internal Wi-Fi in the coach, and it's powered via that PoE port, and it works really well for us. Yeah, and that's I, I, I think that's a good little detail to touch on. I mean, when, when you start sh- sharing functions of one radio, th- there's trade-offs there, right? So if you've got one device and it's doing your Wi-Fi WAN and it's connecting all your devices in, in your RV, there's going to, you know, there's practical limits that you're going to hit. And so depending on how many devices, how fast you're trying to run, uh, separating those two functions may be, may be something of, of usefulness for, for folks that are trying to just, just have a little more power user profile maybe. Now, moving up to the latest and greatest, we've got the BR1 Pro 5G. This is a, like it says, a 5G device. So it'll connect to, to all the major networks over 5G. It's just wrapping up Verizon certification right now, but it is already certified on AT&T T-Mobile. And it is very much Verizon capable. So uh, it'll be official on there, hopefully before the end of the year, but if not shortly into the next year. But this is really the state-of-the-art device. It's got... Wi-Fi 6, again, it's got that 5G. It'll also fall back to 4G. So it's a category 20 device on a 4G network. So still above that gigabit LTE threshold. So still very, very fast on the 4G networks as well. So it's a good future proof, right? If you don't have 5G coverage where you're going today, no problem. It's going to be as fast as possible on 4G. And then when that carrier has the 5G coverage there, it's going to be ready for that as well. Yeah, in testing again with uh, with our friends at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, we were getting 400, and 400 plus megabit download speeds on T-Mobile with this device. So not only is it you know incredibly capable from a modem perspective, but the processor and the memory and sort of the the router throughput back end on that thing is is very impressive. It's definitely a step up from previous generations, and and uh, we're excited for the for the cellular networks to catch up to that thing. Cause uh, you know, they're not all quite there yet, but uh, the fact that we can fail over to 4g and, uh, and, and use those networks when needed uh, definitely helps out. And it's a very good future proof device. It turns out it's hard to get 5g coverage out to all the nooks and crannies of the country, right? It's, it's, uh, it's going to take some time for them to get that coverage rolled out. And uh, so it's, it'll help you yeah. bridge that gap. We're, we're, you know, some of the larger carriers we see, we hop on 5G and it's slower than 4G. We're like, no, but, you know, it's <laughs> it's getting better. And uh, I, I personally think T-Mobile is leading the pack with with download speeds right now on 5G. Uh-huh. Um, but the fact that you just have the ability to 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 be on either network really is 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 great for someone who's looking for the fastest possible speeds. But it is a single modem device and people are always like, well, how come you don't have dual 5G? And that is a, that is something available for because I know that question comes up a lot. But keep in mind, with five G, you need four cellular antennas. So a dual five G would have eight antenna leads up on the roof, uh, it, and they don't typically make a single dome for that yet. So you're getting into um, significantly higher price points and uh, and and a lot of a big fat bundle of wires to the roof. So it's it's not quite uh, feasible, I would say for the RV space at this point, but, um, but it, you know, single 5g is a really great option. That's plenty of speed. Yep. Absolutely. So we've got a whole lineup of, of antennas and these, so these are antennas that we've designed and manufactured in-house. These are not something that we're white labeling. These are things that we've spent a lot of time and thought on, you know, number one, the performance, number two, the price point, and then number three, just the, the installation experience. And so, uh, this line of antennas is something that I'm, I'm really proud of and excited about because it's uh, it's a fairly new offering for us. I think we've had them a little over a year right now, but um, a lot of these models are, are very recently introduced. And so we're just growing this antenna portfolio. So I'm not going to spend time going through each one of these antennas. You can go to, to mobilemusthave.com or peplink.com to check these individual models out. But um, there's just different configurations for different uh different numbers of connections. So depending on the device, you've got one or the other may be a better fit or one or the other might be a better fit. Just if you've got growth plans or expansion plans down the road, you might want to just buy something with more connections ready because these are 5G ready. They've got all the frequency support for 600 megahertz to 6,000 megahertz. So it's going to cover all the way up through that new C-band spectrum that a lot of the carriers are just getting ready to roll out next year. 
So this again is just ready for, for a lot of the things to come on the 5G side. Um, but again, we've got lots of different form factors for different use cases. So there's a lot to choose from here. Um, Eric, I'll let you talk about the, some of these YouTube resources that are out there for folks. Yeah, so uh, this is I've I've said it a few times. We just we really love partnering with the Mobile Internet Resource Center. They they you know have just been such a great partner to to get plain English explanations of the variety of products that are out there. That kind of in that lower picture you see Chris there with the entire lineup of kind of Peplink products and the evolution of how they've um, come you know full circle over the years. Uh, Chris and Cherie, they. They travel with Peplink products. Their go-to products, the Transit Duo, which um, is is the Transit Duo and the Transit Pro, are, are fairly interchangeable, other than a few extra LAN ports. Um, and you know they have access to all of it, and this is what they um, you know travel with. But it, it really is a resource. I mean, not to say you know, we don't want folks to buy Peplink, but they cover everything, and it's not all Peplink. Um, so for some folks, it's hey, we just need a uh, you know, what's the best data plans that are out there that's the place we, we point all of our customers to. If you wanna know the latest and greatest, how to get the highest gigabyte plans, what's going on in data, these are the folks. If you, um, you know, hey, I just need a tablet to connect to the internet. It, they really have just about everything that you could possibly think of. Um, they're, they're really kind of the industry leaders for, for covering all, all things mobile internet. So I definitely recommend folks check them out. And about, I don't know, I wanna say 60 plus percent of the content is 100% free. Um, you can kind of check out the overviews, see what, you know, what modems are, 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 are looking good. And if you really want, if you want to dive into more advanced stuff or look at those, you know, example configurations or hop into, we run a forum actually in the mobile internet resource center where our customers can come to us and ask us more advanced configuration stuff like speed fusion, for example. Um, so that would be, uh, when we'd say, you know, take a look at possibly joining the mobile internet resource center. I think it's pretty, uh pretty awesome and, and, and not uh, a huge, um, you know, investment for folks and uh, members also get a, a pretty hefty discount at mobilemusthub.com that usually pays for the membership. Yeah. I'm just really impressed with them because, you know, they're, they're really focused on the users, right? They're not aligned with a vendor or, you know, it, it's, it's really the user first and they bring a lot of integrity to the content that they're presenting out there. It's not something that, we're talking to them in the background and saying, hey, you should say this about this thing. Or you know, It's purely their perspective and they're looking at it from the user's perspective. And so uh, again, they're just a really unbiased and really trustworthy worthy site from everything that I've seen from them. So very highly recommended. Yeah, and this is a, a YouTube channel called Changing Lanes. Um, they've got over 200,000 subscribers, really well known in the RV space. Um, there's a link down below where uh, Chad and Tara uh, talk about their Transit Duo um, installation. And they do a couple different kind of fun and cool things. Uh, they have a roof antenna installed on their vehicle, but then they also play around with some directional antennas and start to kind of show you what you can do with some pole mounting directional to improve speeds. Um, and these guys, they go, th they're north of a terabyte a month of data usage. So they are power, power users. And it's kind of fun to watch uh, them explain how they stay connected on the road and, and do what they need to do with Peplink products. Yeah, very cool. Very cool content over there. I've, I've enjoyed some of their videos as well. So let, let's, we've been geeky, but let's, let's get really geeky now. Let's, let's show them what, what you guys have set up on, in your environment. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately the, the uh, Mobility 42G wasn't out yet when we, when we built this. So there is a, uh, another seven in one roof antenna in the top right, but, but you know, we'll replace that with a 42G. <laughs> um, but essentially what we, what we have here, I'll kind of start in the top left. This is our setup in our, our rig. So we have a Transit Pro E there. That is, uh, that is linked up um, to that roof antenna that's on the picture in the top right. Um, then that is a seven in one antenna. So we have our Wi-Fi and our four cellular and our GPS uh, transmitting from the roof. If you're wondering why the antennas are sitting on those plastic boxes, it's because our RV has uh, metal rails along the side, which is our awning. And we wanna raise our antennas above those rails for maximum cellular performance. Um, taking it kind of a geeky next step, uh, we took a what's called an HD1 dome, which is a category 18, very fast roof mountable PEP wave device, basically another 
modem. It's a, it's got its antennas integrated into that dome that you see on the top right, all the way kind of towards the front of the vehicle. And we've run that down into a SIM injector, which you see on the left there that says PEP XM on that. Um, and that gives us eight SIM cards that we can remotely inject into that HD1 dome. So we can switch between any carrier we've got, we're testing, this is basically our test unit. So when we're testing data plans or other stuff, I can you know, switch between eight different SIM cards. Plus the transit has another four SIM slots. So I have a total of uh, 12 SIM card slots uh, that we're operating. And uh, the HD1 dome plugs into the WAN port of the transit pro E so that I get that single pane of glass management of all of these devices in, uh, in, on one page. Um, eh, getting outside of Peplink for a second, if you look at the bottom left, I have a 56 volt DC converter that's taking 12 volt power from my RV and it's up converting it to 56 volts. That's I think a $39 converter that we sell at Mobile Must Have. And that then puts 56 volts into the Transit Pro E, which then enables that PoE output. And from there, I don't have the picture here because I ran out of slide space, but that then powers our APAX light, which is behind our TV. So I don't even know how I'd get a picture of it, but um, that is our, our total solution. So uh, basically what this gives us is the ability to have three cellular connections on at all times at a, you know, this isn't, I wouldn't call this a, a, a cheap solution. I think all in with the, with the HD1 dome, we're probably in like a $2,500 price point or something like that. Um, maybe 3000. And if you add the SIM injector, it would go a little bit up from there, but that's optional. You can put the SIMs directly in the HD1 dome. Um, but the point really from this slide is not, hey, you should buy what I have. It's more, look at how modular this stuff is. You can start with a, you know, a Transit Pro E or a, a single modem, and then you can add an upgrade from there and expand out the, the solution to, to meet your needs. Awesome. Well, I think we can open it up for Q&A here. We can spend just a few minutes digging through some of the, the user questions and try and get some answers out to folks. Um, Eric, if you've got any that jump out at you, go right ahead. Otherwise, I'm going to skim through here. I can't really multitask and follow those questions as we're live, but, uh, but yeah. Um, I can take one. One very common one is how to set up Speed Fusion. That one we get all of the time. Um, so if you're inside your Peplink dashboard, you'd be clicking on that Speed Fusion Cloud tab and you'd set up uh, from there, um, pick your data center and then click that Wi-Fi button and, uh, and set up the Wi-Fi name for that. And then you're, you're off to the races. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'll defer to you, Travis, but I think as long as you're in a, a care subscription and you turn on Speed Fusion Cloud, um, I know with the prime care devices, I think you have a one terabyte of, of, uh, of data that's included on that. And it's not billed monthly, which is really nice. It's, it's metered. So if that one terabyte, if you're only using it for zoom calls, that could easily last you a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, depending on the model, the, the price point of the model, there's a different size speed fusion cloud bucket that's included with it. And so, you know, really our whole point there is we want people to be able to try it and see the benefits of that technology, right? It's, seeing is believing on that type of stuff. And so uh, we, we think it's really important to just let people have that right out of the box and, and be able to try that. And if you find that it's really useful for you, it's a, like you said, it's not a monthly subscription. You can top up for a year on a terabyte for 40 bucks. And so that's not your cellular data, right? That's just protecting your, your application data is what that bucket's for, but it's just a really flexible uh, format that, that we make it available to folks. So they're not, adding yet another monthly bill to their, their connectivity, uh, their connectivity spend. Mm -hmm. um, another quick one, uh, people are asking about that um, 5G Verizon certification on the BR1 Pro. Mm -hmm. um, for our customers, what we're recommending they do is if they have a, uh, a legacy hotspot that they have, it can be a you know, five-year-old hotspot, you can actually activate a Verizon data plan, um, a hotspot data plan, um, on that old hotspot and then simply move the SIM and it will auto update the IMAI from our experience. That doesn't necessarily work with all data plans, but we've had really good luck with that. And then the Verizon certification is, is coming, I think any day now or pretty much very soon. So that's just something that I think has had folks holding off and that's the workaround. 
Yeah, I can't I can't make any promises on timelines with Verizon certification. Um, you know, two of the three are certified right now, and there, there's a reason that the third isn't, and it's really out of our control, unfortunately. And so I just I can't make promises. All I can say is we are trying as hard as possible to get those things through. And it's not something that we've not done right or that there's some sort of deficiency in the product. It's a it's a very new process. Um, the 5G certification is very different than the 4G. And so there's just been a lot of hiccups unrelated to the Peplink device completely um, that is holding that up. So I, I know it's frustrating for folks and I know people really want that and I want that, but I just, I don't have control over it and we're pushing as hard as possible to make that happen as fast as possible. So uh, bear with us, please. And, you know, I think another good thing that I've seen people do, I, I can't, I can't encourage people to, to move SIM cards from devices. The carriers kind of have their different uh, policies on which plans will work with which devices. Um, but you can use, you know, a hotspot with Wi-Fi as WAN, or if your hotspot has an ethernet port, there, there's other ways that you can kind of bridge the gap uh, between those devices in, in the interim. But, uh, you know, number one, that, that those 5G devices are using Verizon certified modules. And so, the platform's there. It's capable in every level. It's just getting the, the rubber stamp on the paper to, to say, yes, that's official now. So again, I'm, I apologize that it's taking so long, but we're trying. We're, we're really trying. The, the wheels of Verizon move slow. <laughs> we've, we've seen that. But, but um, at least for my Verizon business plan, you know, which is a a plan made for hotspots uh, to activate that. It switched over, automatically updated the IMEI in the Verizon portal. Everything was fine, not breaking any rules from Verizon. Um, but, you know, for folks who are like, what is the certification really in real world terms? Typically, if, it, if there's not a certification, when you call to activate a new line and you give them the IMEI of the modem, that you can run into problems if it's not a Verizon certified device where the database just doesn't recognize the device as a Verizon device. So that's what that means. So that's why there's a need for, for workarounds. But um, we can confirm it. it is working on, on, our, on our test uh, SIMs, and, and it definitely is a Verizon uh, compatible device. Absolutely. So I see one question about bandwidth bonding and uh, you know, for, for this particular user, it doesn't sound like, you know, making Zoom work smoother is really the priority. It's taking more than one kind of slow connection and, and making it into one fast connection. That, that bonding is definitely possible on most of our devices. There's some, I would say, practical limitations to what makes sense or what's uh, achievable with bonding. So usually with bonding, you want to combine connections that are roughly similar. So you know, cellular plus cellular, yes. Landline plus landline, yes. Cellular plus satellite, no. You can do failover and seamless handoff between those different connection types. Um, but oftentimes, you know, cellular and, and landline connections or cellular and Wi-Fi connections, those are definitely possible combinations. And we're working to improve those algorithms to make those even more possible. And so, you know, that gets into a little bit of a trial and error. Uh, as it stands, but definitely if you have a device that has like two cellular connections, bonding is absolutely possible on that and will provide a lot of benefits, even, even on the Zoom calls. Like you said, Eric, you don't have to use WAN smoothing to make Zoom work better. It's bonding alone will make those app, those real-time applications work better because it can shift those packets from one connection to another. Right? Cellular, cellular networks are really variable. I mean, I can be in one spot with a fixed antenna and I can sit there and watch Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T, and the latency on any one of them can go up really high, or the packet loss can go up really high. I mean, it, it changes literally in a matter of fractions of seconds. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's so, well, it's so, you know, you get these devices, and you have a 20 meg download speed on Verizon, I'm just making this up, and a 10 meg download speed on AT&T. And it's sort of natural to assume that if you bond these two connections together, you're going to get 30 meg down, right? Yep. 20 plus 10 is, and, and it just doesn't work that way. Um, and we kind of, when we talk to customers, we're like, I know the speed test is cool. And I know it gives you that like feeling of, oh, I have something awesome. Focus on, is the internet working? And they're like, yeah, it works great. And I'm like, don't worry about the speed test. 
So what's happening when you have to run some of the traffic across two links is in order for it to balance, it really is, if you, if you had a 20 meg and a 20 and a 10 meg, typically what you'll see out of the combined is, is a double of the slowest connection. So if you have a 10 meg is your slowest connection, double that and you'll see 20. And that's because it's got to put data down both streams and it can't put so much data down one stream and so little down another stream and then effectively put it all back together while maintaining that, that connection quality. So it's much more what the Peplink device is trying to do is much more about connection quality than giving you a really cool speed test. And it's just, it can be frustrating for folks. They're like, oh, but I just want it to combine. And I'm like, well, then you need two really fast connections. And yes, it will then combine them, but they have to be you know, both operating at, at, at peak performance. And then the second thing on bonding for folks is keep an eye on the latency of that connection. Um, we're going to do some really cool walkthroughs and QAs coming up about speed fusion and how to like troubleshoot it. So take a look at our YouTube channel. Um, we're going to start showing folks like, Hey, if you have over 300 milliseconds of, of latency on the connection, like the speed fusion tunnel will off, I think it's 500 milliseconds is the default. It'll not use that connection. Cause it's like, there's so much delay that I'm just going to not, I'm going to bypass that cause it's not helping. So yeah. a lot that can get frustrating for folks when they're in like a heavy congestion area or they're like an RV event or rally because they're like, how come my speech is not working? I'm like, it is. It's just disabling that connection because it's so bad. <laughs> yep. So um, it's, it's avoiding just, that traffic jam for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, one real quick one that I don't have to answer, but I can just address someone asked about mesh. If you go to guides dot mobile must have dot com. We have a complete wireless series, including how to set up wireless mesh on either a MK2 or a transit series that has the Wi-Fi AP controller. Um, so we have guides on how to do that and detailed YouTube videos. So there's links for that at guides.mobilemusthave.com. I see one question about Google Fi, and I think there's two layers to this one that I'll, I'll throw out there. Number one, the Peplink devices are compatible with Google Fi, so you can get data-only SIMs from Google Fi, and all you got to do is plug the APN into the router. I've, I've used it myself many times, and so have many other users. So number one, they're compatible with our devices, but um, you know, Google Fi does connect to more than one network. Um, in any device outside of an Android device, it can only connect to one at a time, and it can not hand off between two networks unless you manually uh, tell it to basically. If you have a, a specific Google Fi Android phone, then they can do more switching between those networks. It's, it's an extra layer of capability that they enable on those very specific models of phones, but um, that type of capability is not something one SIM in our device would be able to do. But again, it would be able to leverage the best network that that SIM is able to see at any given location. Well, I think we can wrap it up there. Thank you so much, folks, for staying on the line here. Um, it's been fun for me. I hope you folks found it valuable. I do want to just thank you again, Eric, for, for number one, all the all the effort you've put into Peplink and, and getting your users connectivity solutions that, that make sense for them. So go check out Eric's website here at mobilemusthave.com. Uh, but again, thanks for, thanks for all the time you put into this, Eric, and, and joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. If folks want to check us out, mobilemusthave.com. We also have that forum at rvmobileinternet.com for more advanced questions for folks with Peplink products if you're interested. Um, and then you can obviously reach out to us on our site. Uh, you can start up a live chat with an agent if you have any questions about any products or visit support.mobilemusthave.com for access to our how-to guides and set up guides and whatnot. And then, um, you know, a lot of folks hang out with our, uh, our YouTube channel because we're, we're trying to produce a lot of content there to show you guys all the latest and greatest of all things Peplink. So thank you for, for checking it out. Yeah, and for folks that haven't done it yet, use our forum, please. There are so many incredible users out there that are so willing to share their tips and tricks that they've learned over the years. And it's just, it really is a community and, and it's fun to see how, how helpful people are with each other there. So, uh, you know, I would definitely start there or use that tool, at least if you're not finding answers for whatever question you've got. And, you know, maybe it's an odd hour of the day or night, you can just go check that out and 
our user base is truly global. We sell into 70 different countries. And so even if it is 2 a.m. where you're at, you might get a quick answer from somebody over in Australia or something like that. So definitely check the form out and, and use that tool as much as you need to. All right, folks, thanks again. And we're going to we're going to wrap this up. Take care. Thank you.